Hey guys, it's May May, and guess what? I got myself one of these Gemini Juniors. You guys have been talking about them so much, and I decided I would try it. And we went ahead and put a few in the store. So if while I'm doing this review, if you want to pick one up, you can get it at mamamadeit.com. Links in the description. Now, it's not really going to be a review. It's more of an unboxing and a demo. So let's open this guy up and see what's inside. All right, so I'm going to start here. Open it up. I have peeked in like this, but I haven't done anything else. Like, look, you can see everything's like this. So these are plates, which we will open and see what all of that is. It comes with a couple of dies. Oh, no, a die and an embossing folder, so we can try it out. And that's a 3D embossing folder. Cool, so we'll try that out. And now we got to get it out, so this may get a little messy or loud. Okay, so I got it to this point, and then I realized a couple things I want to show you. One is there was another die set. I'll show you like this. There was another die set. And we have the uh, manual, the book. This is probably going to come in very handy. And I wanted to show you on the side of the styrofoam, it's going to squeak. I apologize. On the side, this is the plug, it looks like. So you want to make sure you check the styrofoam before you throw this away. Because have y'all ever done that? You ever thrown the styrofoam away with something in it? Oh, the squeak. Let's get it gone. So here he is out of the box. Now I'm going to tell you something. This guy's heavy. Um, there's these things. I probably shouldn't start doing anything until I read a manual. So let's do that. Okay, so the manual's kind of neat. Look, it has a notes section. So if you want to make notes, which you know what I would do? I would do my sandwiches. You know, whatever I have to lay out for whatever I'm using, I would put that here. Or I might make a laminated sheet and put on top of here to let me know. We'll see how that goes. It also tells me what's in the box. A note about the pressure. I want to read this to you so you know. It says, the Gemini, Gemini Junior is very powerful and designed to exert a lot of pressure which allows for cutting very intricate dies. The amount of pressure on the die can be increased or decreased depending on the combination of plates and shims you use. So that makes sense, we're used to that. Then it has sandwiching the plates and it talks about it here, but here's what I think is neat. Over here, it tells you about using shims, how to operate it, and look, if you're cutting thin metal dies, here's the layout. If you're cutting intricate dies, here's the layout. If you're using um, deep multimedia dies, here's the layout. Embossing with Crafter's Companion dies, embossing with 2D folders, and I bet it has, yep, embossing with 3D folders. So the sandwiches are all here. That's kind of cool because I had no idea. So let's plug it up and get it turned on. So I've got it plugged in with the cord in the back, and there's a power strip off camera you can't see, and there's a power button here. I'm going to press that power button and see what we get. Okay, that's accepting power, and then it looks like I have another power button here. I wonder why I have two. Let's read. So I went ahead and looked at this first page, and here's what I want to tell you. So you have a main power button like we just talked about a second ago, and then you have this other power button here, which I'm going to turn on now. Now you also have two other buttons on the front. One of these is the pause resume button, and one of these is the reverse button. So what happens is the Gemini Junior feeds the dives, or feeds your sandwich through automatically. It senses it and it starts. But if it were to get hung, if it were to stop, or if you needed to pause it or back it up for any reason, you can pause it here and you can restart it here or you can reverse it. Now, I also read that if you put in a sandwich that's too thick then and it can't handle it, it will stop it and automatically reverse it for you. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use these dies they gave us. These are just regular old thin dies. So we're gonna start with this first one and do that one. So before I open these and take them out of the package, I wanna show you what is what. This is your clear cutting plate. This is the plastic shim. This is the rubber embossing mat. This is the magnetic shim. And this is the clear, as another clear cutting plate. So I'm excited all this comes in it. So let's start our first sandwich. It also has a metal cutting plate, but it was magnetized to my magnet plate and I didn't know it was in there. So that's also in there. So because the little set of dies that come with this are actually what they call multimedia dies, they're kind of thick. I'm going to use my own thin dies for our first test. So these are some Dress My Craft thin dies that I use in my stash or in my crafting. And here's the sandwich according to the book. I need the plastic shim, no, the clear cutting plate, the plastic shim, the magnetic plate with my die blade facing up, then I need the material to be cut and the other plastic shim. Now that seems like a lot for me to remember. We're gonna see how that goes. I really do think I'm gonna have to like laminate the, the plates up here or something. But here's what happens. We're gonna put this in. This is the first time. Let's see what goes. Now somebody said to me, you're gonna hate your Gemini because it's so loud. It's, it's not super loud. 
And I do hear cracking, but that's because all of them crack. All of the dye machines crack. I didn't think that was super loud. You guys tell me what you thought. Okay, so if I take this off, you're gonna have the cutting into it. That just happens. Here's the dye. It's beautifully cut, actually. Actually, extremely well. And then everything just comes apart. So that is nice. Let's move on to cutting very intricate dyes. All right, so now we're gonna cut this very intricate dye that comes with the Gemini Junior. And they are really good dyes. They're also really stuck down, but they're very thick dyes. And check this out. We use the same setup. Clear plastic magnet. Face this guy up. The material you're gonna cut. And then the plastic again. Oh, no, 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 I'm missing something. Ha, ha, ha. I need the metal cutting plate. I'm glad I looked back because I wouldn't have done it right. So the metal cutting plate and then the clear plastic. I actually like the metal cutting plate because it'll protect this plastic. I almost want to use it every time. I don't know if we can though. We'll see, we'll learn. All right, we're gonna feed this in and let it go. Shannon's loving this already, y'all. She's like, that is so cool. Oh, look. That's a serious, um, that's serious pressure. You can see that dye through it. Let's see how she did. Okay, I wanna show you the back of the paper and I'm gonna lift this off. Okay, so that corner, I mean, it's lifted. Oh, <laughs> I should have paid attention. This is not meant to cut like this, but we're okay. I'll show you what I mean. So let me flick all these out into the trash can. Okay. I tapped it into the trash can and you can see what came out on its own. Now I will need to do a little pokey tool and get the rest of those out. Okay, so here's the cut. Now here's what I was gonna show you. This is where I messed up. I should have paid attention to what this is. And this looks like a um, piece that you insert into an envelope. Cause you can see at the top, there's no cut line on this die. So it didn't cut out completely. But look how beautiful that is. There's some more in here. I wanna cut another one and see how well it cuts when it cuts completely out. Okay, here we go with some intricate ones. Some of these are words. I wanna see just how it cuts. One thing I do love is, I'm not doing this, but we'll see if it's worth all that. We'll see. Shannon's already sold on it. I'm sold. Okay, look at these. Look how intricate. All right. So you can see here, when I lift this up, there's the intricate dies left behind. I'm gonna set those over here, and we are gonna take these out. I'm gonna turn them where you can see them. Oh my word. Look at that beauty. That says love. I'm gonna let Shannon poke those holes out so we can see them. She's over here to the side with me. Oh my goodness. I'm like a kid in a candy shop. I love new tools. From It's not new. This guy's been around. Look at that one. Gorgeous. I'm gonna let Shannon clean that one out too. And we'll come back to it. Now let's look at this. Okay, so this is another one of those pieces that doesn't cut completely out. It just cuts the design. That's really pretty. I have to figure out how to use those. I've never messed with those before. You guys, look how beautiful those are. Very intricate, very tiny, very easy to do. Now, would my other cutting uh, or my other embossing machines do this? Yes, they would cut this. Um, I would just have to crank it. And probably I would, they might be a little bit harder to get out. They might not be, but these are pretty intricate. But uh, we could test them. We could do a cut on the other machine and see. So we'll compare a cut. We'll do that in a second. Okay, so we're gonna test this guy. The deep multimedia dies, we have the little set that came with the Gemini, and they are very thick. You can see the difference. You can definitely feel the difference. It says, uh, in the picture, I'll just show y'all because I wanna see what y'all think. In the picture, it shows the plastic plate, or actually the clear plate, the plastic shim. It shows six pieces of paper or cardstock, I don't know, and then the clear one on top. So here's what we did. I feel like Echo Park paper is a pretty good thickness. These are six by six from Echo Park and we pulled six pieces. We're gonna see what happens. I don't know, this could be bad, but look, let me do it so you don't, right? So here's the sandwich. Clear plate, plastic shim. I'm just going to, I probably should yellow tape that, but we're not going to for the test. We're just gonna cut through here. And then it just calls for the clear plastic plate on top. So I'm gonna just put that in like that and we'll feed this in. Let's see what happens. I bet this makes noise. Oh, did you hear it kind of bog down? Not very much. Oh my word, yes. are you kidding me? Okay, let's look at these. Now this, y'all may see some of these thick old eyes getting in our store, because I gotta be honest with you, if I can cut six at a time, 
I cannot cut six at a time with my hand machine. No. I cannot. That's my arm so would be. That's right. My arm would be so tired. Let me get that little center piece out of there. <clears throat> and look at these, y'all. Are there six? I think we cut six. They're stuck together pretty good. I will show you this. The ones on top have an embossed edge. That does not bother me at all. That's actually cute. The ones on bottom don't. And that's just from pressure. That happens anytime I do multiple. That just cuts six Echo Park papers at one time. And it barely whined. Yeah. It barely made a sound. That's cool. All right. So I feel like I'm probably going to push it too far. But I feel like that's about the thickness of a piece of my chipboard. Let's try chipboard. Remember, you guys, let me do it so you don't have to, right? Yeah, this is our chipboard. This is our, like, thick stuff, okay? So, here's one thing I do want to do, and I messed up already. I'm the queen of this. I always like to use the same one that's going to get cut into, but I've already cut into both. So, you know what? I think I'm just going to let it ride so we don't have to worry about it. So, we're just going to go. So, plastic, I mean, clear, then plastic, then dye, facing up, then material. Perfect. Then clear. All right, guys. If you've messed with our chipboard before, you know it's thick. Let's see what happens. Let me do this so you don't break your machine, right? Yeah. And this is really going to, if it'll work, it's because the die is a thicker die. It will cut deeper. Did it cut? You're looking before I am. <gasps> Look at that. I know, like it was nothing. Let's see. Hold on a second. Let's just see. All right, I'm going to pull this where you guys can. Look at that it even embossed the edges of it. That's awesome. Okay, for ephemera making. That's okay, so on our list we want these deep multimedia dies. Yes. We're loving those. Okay, so there's a tag. Okay, guys, funny story. <laughs> so I probably should read everything before I go crazy and do me. But anyway, at the bottom of the multimedia dies it says. Note, the illustration shows six layers of thin cotton fabric. I thought that was cardstock. It says, deep multimedia dies will cut a variety of different materials. However, we recommend that the total thickness of the material you are cutting be no more than two millimeters thick. Performance of the die and machine will differ depending on the density of the material. Take care when trying new materials. Well, that's pretty thick. I mean, yeah, I, mean I don't know if it's... I don't know if it's two millimeters. I don't know. It didn't struggle. <laughs> It didn't struggle at all. Mm -mm. So, warning, if you're going to try thick materials at home, they're not going to back you up on that because they gave you a warning and said, you know, take But it did say care. if it was too thick that it would spit That it, it would out. stop. So, I did have that going for me. I'm getting a little dirty. But I did have that going for me. So, ugh, I should read. From now on, I'll read all the notes as well. I absolutely adore these deep cut dies, but I don't know if they only work in the Gemini. So I think what we should do, Shannon, is try this in our momentum machine. The deep cut. You want to do that real quick? Let's try it. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We'll try them both. We couldn't decide which one we wanted to try, but we're just going to try them both. We're going to put the cardstock in. I may be sad about this, but let me do it so you don't have to. All right, we're going to put the cardstock in. I'm going to put the base plate in. I'm going to put my deep cut die facing up. Then I'm going to put my cardstock on it. Let me move this over. You, want tape? you know what I better do? I better get this out because it's already full of chipboard. Let me have that pokey tool, please. No, I don't think so. I think it'll be all right. Yeah, because that would not have cut well. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to put this to the side so I can lay this. Because I'm, I'm really not trying to get tags. I'm really just trying to see if it'll cut. So if it messes up. All right, and then I'm going to put this in. Now I got to try to crank this through. If I see that we need to abort mission, we will. Agree. Oh, we may have to abort mission. Yeah, we're aborting mission on that one. That that was too tight, and I was not going to force that. So, no, this didn't cut through what the Gemini did a while ago. So, let's try something else. Let's try the chipboard. I feel like we're going to get the same res the same result, um, but I want to try it. Because I want you, if you're making a decision between this guy and that guy, I want you to see, you know, if you're a person that wants to make your own chipboard embellishments and stuff like that, then this... May not be the one for you. I'm not forcing that. It does not want to go. I'm not going to force it. So, it doesn't cut the same as that Gemini did while ago. So, we know that. So, when you're making your decision, you got to decide. how. What do you use? Um, let's emboss. Okay. So, this next one says embossing with Crafter's Companion dies. Now, what that means is 
we are going to leave the mark of the die without cutting through the page, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this up here kind of to the top. What I've got here is the clear, then the plastic. I'm gonna lay this up in that top corner just to try, just to, for kicks and giggles. Then what you do is you place the rubber mat on top. So the rubber mat is gonna accept the pressure from that die and not allow it to cut through. I have a hard time believing this is gonna work. We're gonna see. Now, I know these mats work. I've used these mats before in other machines and I know, but this guy has so much pressure. I'm very interested to see how this goes. All right, here she goes. Ooh, there's some noise. That's interesting, we haven't heard a lot of the cracking, only a little bit. Okay, so I don't see it through the plastic mat, I mean through the, the rubber mat at all. Let's just see here. We're sticking together a little bit. Oh, it is kind of sticky. It's not sticky, but sticking. Okay, so there's that. All right, so here, the die is stuck. Okay, that cut through some. I thought it would. I kind of thought that would. So mm, maybe the intricate die is not something we should use for embossing. I don't know, but I felt like that would cut through, and it did because it's a little bit sharp. I will say this. I typically don't emboss with dies, so this is not a deal breaker for me, but it might be for you if that's what you're using for. I use embossing folders for that. So, All right, let's go to the next one. All right, so we're going to emboss with a 2D folder. Now, if you don't know the difference in a 2D folder versus a 3D folder, 2D folders are your classic everyday embossing folders we've had for years. The 3D folders are new and they go a little deeper and I'll show you those in a second. All right, so let's do what it says. It's so easy. You're gonna take a piece of cardstock, I'm just gonna use this for kicks and giggles, piece of cardstock, put it in here. You're gonna use a clear plastic plate, your embossing folder, your material, and another clear plastic plate, that's it. Now let me tell you this real quick, I read the note. <laughs> It says, if you're embossing very thin material, such as vellum or acetate, you can de decrease the pressure by placing a piece of thin copy paper inside the embossing folder. I would think that would increase, but it says it would decrease the pressure. So if you're doing acetate or something else, try it like that. All right, so let's feed this in. This is, this is like my everyday use. Regular embossing folder, this is what, I use this more for embossing folders than even dies. So we'll see how this goes. Let us look. Nothing. Literally nothing. What did I do wrong? Let me read again. Clear cutting plate. 2D embossing folder with material inside and then the clear cutting plate. So this one, it is barely there. You can barely see it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it again and I'm going to add a shim because I will tell you it's not unusual for certain machines to need shims. Um, there was a time with my, my old Cricut, uh, my cuddle bug, there was a certain embossing folder I had to add a shim. So let's see what happens. I didn't think that was going to work. These felt kind of thin to me. All right. So clear plate. Am I doing it right? Clear cutting plate, embossing folder with material inside. I'm going to add the plastic shim and see what we get. Remember, let me do it so you don't have to. Let me do it. Okay. Put this inside, slide it in. It doesn't like that, and I don't know why. Okay, look, it's doing something weird, y'all. Let's pause it. First time we've done that, let's back it up. Let's help it out a little. All right, let's see what I'm doing here. Maybe you should put the <coughs> shim under. Oh, you're right. I put the shim in the wrong place. Every other time, the, the plastic shim is under, and I put it above, so I bet that's what it was. Let's see if it changes things. So you'll know that, too. That did change things. Now it is feeding it through. It's a little bit tighter. So maybe the metal shim and not the plastic shims that look bad. Hello. Let me do it so you don't. <laughs> okay, we're good. We're good. We're okay. It's a little bit warped. I think that was where this happened. I think it made that sound when this happened. Please don't do this at home, y'all. Please don't do this. <laughs> Look how deep that is, and it even cut, so it's not that way. Let's try something else. Y'all gonna let me try so you don't have to, please? Okay. <laughs> don't do this at home. Let me do it. Do All it. right. No, don't do, do it, it at home. correctly at home. Yes, do it correctly at home. All right, so let's, let's try a different embossing folder. Maybe this one just isn't very deep, so we'll try another one. And if it doesn't work, this time I want to try it with the metal shim as a shim. Oh, that was a loud sound, y'all. 
Don't try this at home. Just as Shannon had leaned down on the table to watch it, it goes, pow! Scared me! All right, so this is a, this might be an old cuddle bug folder. Or it could, no, this may be um, Echo Park. I'm not really sure. It's not, it's not listed. So here's what I'm gonna do. Put it inside here. Put some paper in. We're gonna do the regular one, right? Okay, regular is clear plastic, embossing folder, and clear plastic. That's what it says. I'm reading that right, correct? Yes. Clear cutting plate on bottom, then embossing folder with material inside, then clear cutting plate on top. Here we go. Mom's going to make that noise again. <laughs> you shouldn't make your own recipes. You shouldn't go off. You should do what they say. All right, let's see what we're getting. I'm not loving that. It's not working well. All right, I'm gonna try what I said I was gonna try. Let me do this so you don't, we may step out. <laughs> Here's my thought. This shim is thick. This is thinner. We know it's gonna go through, okay? Let's try it. In the past, I would put like a um, thin piece of cardstock, you know, which you could still do, but I wanna try this. This may be bad, let's see what happens. Shit is running. <laughs> So far, so good. I was going to say, it's not struggling. So far, so good with that one. It struggled the last time. Yeah, and I was kind of mean to it, wasn't I? All right, let's see what we get. Oh, yeah. Better. Still not great. Still not. I tell you what, let's do really quick. Let's get um, the Momentum machine, and let's run it through there. Let's compare them. So, I wouldn't normally bring another machine in, but I, we need to look at this. We need to see, okay? So, I'm going to open up this um this is my um, Freestyle Memento, or my Memento Freestyle machine. This is the one I use most of the time, and, and I'm pretty consistent with it. I know how it's going to do. So, we're going to put this embossing folder, same one we've been using, on this paper. And for this machine, it's really easy. You're going to use the base plate and the embossing plate, which is super thin. Okay? And put it in. The difference in this one is I crank it, where the other one is power. Let's see what we get. I can already tell this is much deeper. Look, much, much deeper. Let me find the other one to compare them. Check them out, much deeper. This one even might have cut a little bit. No, no, it didn't, but big difference in that. So, 2D embossing folders. I don't know that this is the one for your 2D embossing folders. Okay, let's try using a piece of cardstock. We're gonna try one more time. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do this time. I've got my embossing folder with cardstock in it. I'm gonna take an extra piece of cardstock and put that inside, so that'll be the first size of shim that I try. So I'm gonna use clear plate, extra piece of cardstock, embossing folder with the cardstock inside it, and then my other clear plate. Because that is, I mean, it was just that simple of the sandwich. All right, here we go, we're gonna feed it in. It didn't struggle there. There's no struggle. It's going through really easy. I did not think that would struggle because we put that thickness in already. Let's see what we get. I'm still not, it's still not good for me. It's still kind of pale on one side. All right, let's try it with two pieces of cardstock. All right, so can I line this right back up? I bet I can. So we don't have to keep cutting. I did. No, I'm good. We'll just line it right back up. We're going to put two pieces of cardstock in this time, our embossing folder. Some of you guys are watching and going, for that much money, I shouldn't have to do this. And I'll be honest with you, I feel that way too, but I've had to do this in the past with other embossing folders and other machines. So this is not new for me. I actually had a piece that I knew was my shim that I used with my cuddle bug. And so I was used to it. So once you get this down, you just create yourself a little shim and use it. That didn't struggle at all to go through. Little pop at the end. Did you think a little more than usual? All right, this is with two pieces. That's better. That's much better. Yeah. I could go with that. It's a little pale here, but it's still a lot, lot better. Um, I mean, that's about as good as my memento is going to do. Matter of fact, where did that piece go? Let's see. It's right here. See? That's the one we do with the memento, isn't it? So. That's just about as good. So, then there you go. I mean, that's not a deal breaker for me. It might be 
for you, I don't know, but what I would do is I would just um, maybe glue these together with maybe some sticky tape. Did you still have room for that? I might laminate them the size. Laminate it. That, that might be perfect. might be enough to just give it that little bit more. And just, you know, write on here. Shim. 2D embossing folder shim, and then you got it. Okay, guys, so this one's different, so check this out. This is that 3D embossing folder I was telling you about, and you, there is such a difference here. You can really tell the difference. Now, let me say this to you. A lot of people, including, um, we were in a workshop with Sizzix recently, and they said it is best to miss the paper when you're doing these 3Ds, so they'll just kind of gently take the pattern. I'm not gonna do that today. We're just gonna do this, but you might wanna miss them with water just a little bit, and then do this. I've seen that a lot. But anyway, 3D embossing folder, and here's what you need. You need the clear plastic plate, the magnetic shim, Shannon's checking me because I'm doing it from memory, the embossing folder with the material, and here's what's interesting. The plastic shim goes on top. And the reason I think this is interesting is because while ago, this kind of messed up us feeding, right? So let's see what happens now. This is what it says to do, right? That is what it says to do. All right, here we go. 3D embossing folder. And it is a Crafter's Companion 3, 3D one, so it came with it. So they've done No it like noise. This. No noise, no crack, no struggle. If they watch this, they're gonna be mad at me for going off course. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, look, that's pretty. Now, there's a lot of wiggling here, but here's why. Because I didn't cut this to size, none of this would be here. You know what I'm saying? And it would it would probably do even better. Maybe I should sink it in on the other one too. Maybe this is kind of, I don't know. Um, that That's pretty though. I gotta be honest. This machine feels like a die cutting machine more than an embossing machine to me. Um, but I do like it for die cutting because I do like how it does it quickly. All right, we're gonna try cutting these down and see if they do better. So this guy is, I'll tell you how big he is. You already look? Four by six. Okay, so Shannon cut us a piece that is four by six. I guess we could have missed it. <laughs> we're not gonna go that far, okay. Four by six, and here's what we do on this one. This is the 3D, so we use clear, magnetic, magnetic this guy, and, and plastic. plastic. And let's feed that in. I think it's interesting they use the magnetic. They're clearly using it for thickness, the right thickness. All right, let's see if it did better. I think it did better. It did. I, yeah. It does look better to me. Let's bring this one over. And I think it just looks cleaner and neater. I'll turn them like that so you can see them. Just being, you know, cut to size. That's really, really pretty. It is. You could do a lot with that. A lot and look how deep the other side is so even if you want to use this side that's very very pretty so I love the 3d we are gonna be bringing some more 3d embossing folder in <laughs> embossing folders into the store we were picking some out today because I really really like these y'all know I'm always behind the game I'm always late to the game I'm late here I'm late with these that's just how I roll okay guys so it's the next day so you'll notice like I'm in different clothes but it's the next day and I was watching the edit Tamitha edited this video I was watching it and I was like why didn't I try that after we did the 3D folder, the embossing folder, it was so beautiful, I thought, why didn't I just try that sandwich on my regular 2D one to see if it worked better rather than make it a shim? That's what we're gonna try. And I wanna show you what happens because I tried it and I didn't get good results. And here's what that um, folder is. I'm gonna set this here. That one is the clear cutting plate, the magnetic shim, okay? Then whatever product you want. So we're gonna use the same Buffalo Check folder we've been using. And then you put that in, and then it calls for the plastic shim. This is what you would use for the 3D. And you saw how beautiful that 3D was. Now watch this. So when we look at this, this just blows my mind. I don't know how this works, but somebody does. Look, absolutely nothing. It does nothing. So, I was like, there has to be a sandwich that makes this work. So here's what we discovered. Not the plastic shim, but what you'll do, or what has worked, okay, is clear magnet seems to be the perfect size. Your project, this guy, which is just regular 2D, okay, and then your clear plate. This seems to work. Now, you will get a pop when it comes past your folder inside the sandwich, but it's not a big deal. So if you hear that pop, that's what's happening. So check this out. 
Hear how it kind of bogs down? It's working. It has to do that a little bit. There's the pop <laughs> that I told you about. Okay, so now, but it's not bad. It's nothing like that one that was really bad. But look, that is what we're looking for with embossing on a 2D folder. So that is the sandwich. And here's how I wanna just prove to you that works. Do you remember in the very beginning, we tried this daisy folder that didn't do a thing? Watch how beautiful this is. So I'm gonna put this inside of here. Again, clear, magnet, clear. That's an easy sandwich to remember and I don't have to make any shims, right? All right, and then I'm gonna feed that in and watch. It's gonna pop. There it is. But look how gorgeous this is. I feel much better about this. Look at that. That is stunning. That turned out, that's better than my regular. Yeah, I There's think it's... no curl, nothing. No it curl. Is perfect. It is beautiful. No warping. It's absolutely gorgeous. So, I'm happy about that. We learned the sandwich. I am going to make that little laminated sheet. And I tell you what, if you guys want me to make that a PDF, if you're going to pick up the Gemini, you want a little PDF, we'll make it where you can have it too. I'm either going to make one single sheet to put here or I'm going to make like a little flip flip book. So there's that. I'm excited to know that because all night long I was like, I shouldn't have to make shim, shouldn't have to make shim. We don't. We have what we need. So we just use it in that sandwich method. Um, so I wanted to put that clip in here as well. Okay, before we head out in our demo, I want to mention this. This card comes in the machine and it is a register your Gemini Junior machine card. I think this is important because if you want accurate service, if you want them to be able to, you know, pinpoint your machine and work on your machine specifically, you should go and register your machine. Registration will help Crafters Companion to provide you with faster service, and you can choose to receive any important updates on Gemini Junior, new products, special offers, and inspiration. I would definitely go register. All right, guys, so that is my review and demo. I think it's both. I think we did a pretty good detailed review of this guy too. Let's talk pros and cons. So for my pros, I love that it's electric. I never really thought I would love that, but I have to be honest, when you're using dies and making multiples with something, it is nice not to have to crank. The first place I ever saw this in use in person was, was some ladies at one of our crops and they were making, I wanna say 200 invitations in the weekend and they would just load it and cut it, load it and cut it. And that made me want to get it, number one. Another pro I have for it is the size of it. I love that it's, um, there's no handle on the side that I have to make sure I have room to store. Um, it's very sleek, it's very small. I think it could sit on my desk and stay plugged in. Um, another pro I didn't point out, on the sides, there's these finger pieces. So when you are picking it up, it gives you a place to pick them up. That is a pro, because listen, one of my cons is it weighs a lot. It's, it's, not, it's not light, it weighs a lot. But because I think I would put this in place and kind of leave it there, that doesn't really bother me. Now, would I take it to crops? I would take it to crops, but but it'd be heavy. I'd have to know that. I'd put it in my rolling cart. Um, I do. Another pro I have is that it comes with all these plates. I don't like when I buy something and I have to buy a bunch of extra plates to make the machine work. I love that it comes with all the plates. Another pro, I love that it comes with all the sample dies and the sample embossing folders because it actually lets me try some things that I might not have tried before. Other pros I have, very simple buttons, nothing hard to deal with. I don't have to use any software to figure it out. And the back is just plug in, turn on, and go. I love that because I have to learn enough technology as it is, right? Um, I don't think it's too loud. That's a pro for me. I don't think it's too loud. However, I can see why people would think it is too loud in certain places. For example, I used to craft in my kitchen, and I would usually craft when the kids went to bed. And this guy might be too loud for that setting. Probably for my kids, it would be fine because my kids sleep like rocks. But for other folks, it might, especially a toddler or an infant, it might be too loud to craft near them. Shannon made the point, if you're crafting in the living room while the family's watching TV, it might be too loud for that. It might annoy people there. Um, but other than that, it doesn't bother me too much because I'm used to my other machines, which are pretty loud. So I kind of know that I don't craft with those around um, movies and when people are watching TV or babies are sleeping or whatever. Other pros. Shannon, what pros you got? Um, I mean, for me, it's easy to use. I have a messed up shoulder. It makes it a lot easier. If you have hand issues and the crank and trying to hold it down are hard, it's, I mean, and you love to cut things out with eyes, yeah. I'd say totally get it. 
for those of you who don't know, Shannon has um, frozen shoulder. So if she had to make invitations and was using dye, and Shannon loves repetitive projects, so she would totally do that. <laughs> Yeah. This would make it easy. I bet you borrow this and take it home sometime. Oh, I would. Um, cons. Let's talk cons. You might think I would say the price, but no. I think the price is good for what you get. I don't think it's that bad. Mm -hmm. um, at first, I thought it might have been a con, but I don't think it is. Second con, I'm going to say the emboss, regular embossing, that 2D embossing. I do wish that it did a better job in and of itself because I feel like my other machine does a really good job with that. So it kind of confuses me why this one doesn't. And it really confuses me because of the pressure. It seems it should have more pressure. So that was weird. Now, is that kind of deal breaker? It is not for me because I would just make that extra shim like I showed you and just use that because I've done that before. I've had to do that myself. You, I think I even have videos showing you guys how to make shims for stuff. Another pro I wanted to mention was the handbook. Here it is. I think the handbook's a pro. Very easy, not a whole lot. I do want to tell you that there's like six languages in here. So even though it looks kind of thick, it's very few pages for English. Um, and I also love the languages. It go, it does German, let me think, German, Spanish, Dutch, French, English. That's it, I think. But, um, so it's only five. She counted, it's only five. So that's the English. That's all I have to read for the English. I love that. Um, a con for me because I'm lazy and I'm used to what I've got, all these plates are kind of a con for me, like having to keep up with what goes with what and how to use and da-da-da. That can be a con for me. However, I think that's just a learning curve. By the time I did these a couple times, I think I would I would know. I think it would become second nature to pick this up and pick this up and pick this up. I think that'd be fine. So I can't really, I can't really fault this machine for that. No, I don't think and I can. To me, another pro, the book lays out really nicely how and what to layer where. It's in words, photos, and it's in pictures. So. It's got arrows. Um, another pro, since you're saying that, is these are marked. Aren't these clearly marked what they are? The packaging mm -hmm. is clearly marked. Whether they are on here, I don't know, but the packaging is clearly marked, so you know what they're saying. I don't think these are marked the same, but it, on the packaging itself, it tells you use the clear plastic plate. It's called clear plastic plate. Everything matches up. That's good. You might think, well, that makes perfect sense. It doesn't always do that. Sometimes things aren't called the same, and it can be an issue. Um, all right. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Do you have a, a Gemini Junior? Do you love it? Do you find? Do you have some cons or pros? Let's talk about it. Um, I'll be using it. I like it. I'm gonna put it into my into my everyday. I think I'm I'm thinking now where it can live on my desk. I'm I'm sitting here looking at my joy sits on the desk. This guy's going to sit there, too, so I can just use it whenever I feel like it. And that is it. I hope you enjoyed this. Again, like I told you in the beginning, if you're interested in picking up one of these guys, we do have a few in store. We did not bring in, I want to say we brought in four. So, very few of these in store. But that lets Vince know if you really like them. And if you do, he'll bring them back in. Um, and there you go. The Gemini Junior. A new tool for me. And maybe one for you too. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. I love to do reviews and demos for you guys. So if you'd like to see more of these, give me a thumbs up and let me know you like them. Also, don't forget to subscribe because I'd love to have you back for all our other videos as well. Till next time. Bye now.